everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Let's Talk ETC podcast. I'm here with Dr. Christian Severino. We're going to talk about uh, everything going on in the Ethereum Classic community and uh, blockchain in general. I um, uh, guess we're your two hosts. Um, my name is Carlo Vicari. I'm Carlo V ETC on Reddit and in the Ethereum Classic Slack. And I'm here with uh, Dr. Christian Severino. He goes by Severino on Slack and uh, on Reddit also. What's going on, Christian? Uh, doing good. Uh, uh, so welcome, uh, Carla. Welcome everybody listening and uh, to our first uh, episode. And uh, let's get to it. Yeah. So um, in this podcast, we're just going to be going over some of the things that are going on inside the community and going over some of the development stuff and you know what's kind of happening recently, what's going on now, and what might be going on in the future. So um, let's get to it. Uh, you know, first thing on the board is, uh, you know, the newsletter that was released earlier this week, which had a lot to cover. Uh, I know you checked it out, Christian. We got a lot of good feedback about it. Yes. Uh, you know, it covered stuff, um, talking about the bomb delay that was cooked into the last protocol update, which, uh, a lot of people, um, I guess weren't necessarily aware of, but, uh, we've been trying to get the word out there about that bomb delay being part of the last update. Uh, it's delayed until late 2017. For anybody listening that wasn't aware. Um, also, there's going to be another update coming in January to fix the uh, replay attack issues. Um, as far as the replay attack issues that they're going to be fixing, Christian, for anyone who's listening, um, what uh, you, wrote, you wrote an article about that too, which was pretty cool. So uh, we'll be sure to include that in the description. Right. Tell everybody kind of what's going on with that. Yeah, so the replay attack involved the fact that you could take a uh, transaction from either system, the uh, Ethereum Classic or the Ethereum with the fork, and play it on the, on the other system, and it would accept it. And the reason is because there was no enforcement of uh, a, a, the nonsense being different across the systems. And uh, there's more in my article about that and how to uh, protect yourself from that. You basically have to move your currency to, or your ether to a, a different address that's not uh, vulnerable. And uh, so gotcha. be sure to check that out if that's something on your mind. Cool, cool. Um, oh, by the way, the, another the thing next I want to point. point. So your, um, yeah, definitely. This develop yeah, this development report that you're talking about is very nice because otherwise you have to go to lots of different places to find out what's all the stuff that's happening. So this is a very nice kind of summary of, of what you would find doing all that work, right? Digging through like you've done uh, the different sources. Yeah, so. yeah. We're trying to consolidate as uh, much stuff as possible and, um, you know, trying to get some more info out there and some more things that are going on uh, inside the community. Um, yeah, because nobody has the ability to keep up with everything. I know you, as part of your job, you're kind of involved in lots of different uh, things going on, but uh, maybe everybody doesn't have the the ability to, to stay on top of all this like you do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about. And uh, also, this podcast was a, was a great idea, uh, you know, trying to get everybody that's interested in, in YouTube and podcasts and stuff like that, um, maybe, you know, a different medium than the standard newsletter and reading and emails and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know how everybody else thinks, um, but uh, I sometimes don't have time to read as much as I'd like to, but what I find myself doing when I find a podcast that I like is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll copy it, the MP3, to my uh, smartphone and then play it in the car on a, my commute. And uh, that's some time that yeah, definitely. would have been wasted anyway, and I've learned a lot about ETC that way. Um, okay, so the next thing on the uh, development report that I want to talk about, and this is, this is the cool one. This is the one that everybody's focusing and talking about ever since the last protocol update went through. Um, it's uh, about monetary policy. Yes. And uh, normally this would be a, a boring thing, and probably to uh, a lot of my friends that aren't in the uh, blockchain space, this would be uh, a boring subject. But for everybody that's interested in ETC and interested in uh, Bitcoin, blockchain, and you know all that good stuff, um, it looks like... Uh, a lot of the community and a lot of the people involved in this are leaning heavily in favor of a capped supply, which is um, 
Uh, we're getting a lot of great responses from the Asian community and, well, international community in general, as well as, uh, you know, domestic North America, South America, and stuff like that. So uh, I, I, I don't know who you've been speaking to, but I'm sure you've gotten a lot of great feedback as well, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think the, the cap is a great idea. Um, I'm, I'm hesitant to, to uh, make any pronouncements in the area of monetary policy because that's, yeah, not, you know. that's not what my PhD is in. But um, let me just say that my sense, and if, if people disagree with me, they're free to disagree uh, in the comment section. But uh, my sense is, so blockchains allow us to do a lot of things without anybody in control. That was a big point of a, my last paper that I wrote. And so uh, mon the, the debate with monetary policy, one of the debates is, do we want a bunch of elites trying to manipulate the economy in a good way, uh, right, the benevolent dictator type idea, or do we just want to let distribute the power and let think the chips fall where they may? And my sense, I think Satoshi would agree with me, I think the, uh, the cryptocurrency community leans towards, right, distributing power, don't let anybody be in control, they're, they're not a big fan of this benevolent dictator idea. And mm -hmm. we want to have a monetary policy where it's specified in advance what's going to happen. Everybody knows the, you know, when the, when the uh, ether, the supply is going to grow, and we don't have somebody that can have the power to say, oh, you know, today I feel like increasing the money supply by. Yeah. No. I think that's yeah. with the what happened in the last few years with the the Federal Reserve. I think there's a real uh, that's just a sore spot with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's that's where you know even the the original white paper um, for Bitcoin yeah. talked about a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think I think it's a great direction as well. And I know what you mean. You know, I, I'm not uh, an economist or anything like that, but uh, you know, and on the surface, and probably I'd say deeper than the surface, since I do understand a little bit of this stuff. Um, I think it's a uh, it's a great idea, and sh I'm I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. Yeah, um, and I think we we can't. Um, I mean, we won't we won't be able to settle the debate on what's the best economic policy in general. Uh, people have been debating that for centuries, but yeah, I, think, I don't think that's gonna. <laughs> I think I think what what we can offer is we can offer a system where you know what's going to happen. It's predictable, and and we'll we'll stand by that. And if if that's the way to go, if that's a useful way to run a monetary system, uh, then great. Um, but that's that's what we can offer. If we try to offer the benevolent dictator idea, we're not really offering anything that, right? Traditional governments don't already do. So I don't see the point in in trying to go there with a cryptocurrency. Yeah, I, I saw. Um, you know, this was discussed a lot on Slack, and uh, everyone was pretty much in agreement that, um, you know, we, we're committing to looking into this sort of stuff, but it's going to take a lot of research and careful planning, and you know, to execute it properly rather. Than, yeah. You know, uh, standard haste makes 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 waste type of stuff. So, um, you know, a lot of great people are looking into this and doing their research. Um, also, the the proposal that's out there currently um, that a lot of people are talking about um, is the it's from the user Snaproll from Slack. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll post the uh, link to his document in the comments below. Uh, and also, Chuck wrote an article about Snaproll's uh, proposal. Uh, we'll we'll link that as well. It was on Medium. It was called uh, instead of a halving, a tithing for mm -hmm. ETC. So if you guys want to check that out on Medium, we'll post the link there. Yeah, I read those uh, and I I really appreciate uh, these yeah. guys stepping up and uh, sharing their ideas. Uh, and they even yes. worked out yeah the numbers like when the yeah. uh, the monetary supply is going to reach the ninety percent ninety nine percent of the, the how much yeah. it's, how much it's ever going to get and. Uh, they they really did a lot of work. So uh, if anybody's interested in that, definitely check that out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He he did a great job. Very cool. So uh, shout out to Snaproll for that one, um, and also Chuck for that great article. And um, anybody that helps Snaproll on that, and I'm not mentioning. I apologize, but uh, I'll uh, add your names. I guess if uh, you want to put your name on it, we'll put it in the comments below. Yeah, one thing uh, I thought was uh, interesting is so Bitcoin. Uh, they cut their their rewards in half, right? Every uh, certain uh, num yeah. certain number of blocks. Uh, but um, 
I thought it was interesting that they uh, people were proposing to to cut it by ten percent. So you yeah right? yeah because they when you're dealing with money and people's emotions, you don't want to change anything too fast. So I yeah yeah was, someone uh, someone brought up that the having was a, a good thing because you know it okay. gets Ethereum in the news and it's like this giant event. But then a few other people were talking and we all kind of came. Not that this is necessarily the agreement, but a lot of people were talking about it and they said, you know, we're, we're going to be in the news for, um, you know, stuff, development stuff that we have going on. Uh, and so we should be focused on a, a, a nice, you know, safe 10% down as opposed to this very violent, you know, having events that Bitcoin has, which do seem to cause a lot of issues in the community or not a lot of issues, but some issues in the community. So if we can alleviate that, uh, for the miners and developers and, you know, the general community, if we can improve on what Bitcoin has done, you know, it, it's a step in the right direction. Um, yep. So, uh, yeah, and also, also any of you guys that want to join and talk about monetary policy and kind of participate in the community, join us on Slack. We'll post a, a link to join our Slack in the, in the description below. Um, and there's the monetary policy channel, which we'll also link you to that. Um, so that's also Christian. I want to ask you about. Uh, I guess what are your what are your personal feelings on the 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 tiding as opposed to the having? So I I like the idea of the tithing just because I like change to happen slowly. Um, I don't necessarily like to jar everybody's emotions and stoke their fear. So I would I that again. I'm and I'm not an economist, but that seems like the the most sensible thing to do. Yeah, I thought it was pretty elegant too. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on, I guess, as far as uh, the last uh, development report, guys, that was uh, put out uh, a few days ago. Um, so also, next thing on the newsletter, I guess we could talk with everybody about was uh, Charles had a really great interview. Uh, for anyone out there listening that doesn't know, it's uh, Charles Hoskinson. Mm -hmm. uh, he's um, in charge of um, well, IOHK. That's uh, we'll link you to that as well in the uh, description below. But that's a company that he started um, after he left uh, Ethereum. He's one of the original founders of Ethereum. So a very intelligent guy, great guy. And uh, we'll post uh, his YouTube uh, interview that he did with Cryptoholics that was really great and provides a lot of insight into what's going on in Ethereum Classic and what the future might hold for Ethereum Classic, if you guys want to check that out. Yeah, that's uh, you got a chance to listen to that, right, Christian? Yeah, that's one of the uh, one of the podcasts that I've been listening to on my drive uh, to and from work. And he, ha yeah, I can I can certainly recommend that uh, if anybody wants to uh, check that out. One, he has a lot of great ideas. He's as you said, he's a smart guy. One thing that really intrigued me was the how do you uh, make? He he wants to have a decentralized way to make uh, uh, changes to the protocols. I know we all know with the hard fork that how contentious that was. Contentious. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anytime you make changes, uh, people might wonder, you know, is this really a decentralized community? Who's really in charge? And he was, he was discussing making a, 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 a way to, to uh, discuss issues, make changes, vote on changes in a decentralized way. So again, so that everybody knows what to expect and... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it was um, in reference to like the Dash model. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, don't, I don't think he said anything uh, necessarily for or against the Dash model because I think uh, IOHK is doing a lot of research looking into it and looking at what the pros and cons are mm -hmm. of it. But uh, the, word, the word interesting definitely comes to mind for the Dash he, model. Um, yeah, he's... And interesting is cool. Yeah. Yeah, he so, seems to be big on the idea of you know let's let's say in advance what we're doing and uh, let's be totally open and uh, you know so there, there's no funny business there's no reason to think yeah yeah get so, get everything out get everything out on the floor talk about it and you know often a lot of discussion and debate leads to better ideas for what's going on mm -hmm. what you can do going forward with something so yeah. Yeah. Um, let's go to uh, you know that's in reference to the uh, cryptoholics episode and uh, also there's a we're talking about the your article that you actually let out 
um, admit blockchains are weird and introduction to the strangeness, which I thought was a really great article. Uh, if you want to talk about that. Yeah. So I like, like you and everybody, I've heard the term blockchain and everybody's been getting excited about it. And, uh, you know, people say it's revolutionary, and I was just thinking, what what is so revolutionary about it? And it kept bugging me. I mean, I, I could answer all the questions on the on the technology, but what I was just trying to think, what what is it that's special? How can I say it in the in the simplest possible way? Um, and that's kind of what made me to write the article. And it was kind of what I was saying a few minutes ago. The, uh, in my opinion that uh, one thing that's revolutionary is is not having anybody in charge. And that's what I think is the, the new thing that it provides. And so everybody's trying to now do everything, social media, right, uh, land yeah. titles, everything without anybody in charge. And um, and so to, to kind of make that more uh, understandable to people, I brought up the analogy of how uh, uh, free markets work that way, that nobody's in charge. And, yeah. and by, and you know, almost seems almost miraculous that that seems to work better. Not only does it work, it, it works having people try work, work for yeah. their own, own interest ends up making things work out better than if they tried to. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, it's almost like, uh, uh, you know, trust it, it, it's trustless in the same way that something is priceless. Something that's priceless is worth a ton. And uh, something that's trust trustless is actually extremely trustworthy. Yes, uh, yes. So I, I think that's pretty funny. It's it's when you take the uh, decision makings and all the important stuff away from people that can tamper with it, mm -hmm. that it becomes uh, an extremely trustworthy system. Yeah, um, and I also you know, the competition. How? Yeah, yeah. There's uh, competition is uh, important for uh, uh, free market, and it's interesting that they also make. Uh, they're foundational to blockchain, so maybe there's some deep thing there. Some uh, philosopher can uh, may write a paper about someday or something. But uh, competition is a core to both. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I, I think that's those are definitely important concepts for um, you know blockchain and cryptocurrency and you know this whole decentralized movement going forward in general. Um, so uh, also there was a interesting discussion going on on reddit um for anybody out there listening who, who wasn't taking part or wasn't looking into it and they were talking about like what immutability means and what it doesn't mean and how that can be sometimes uh you know a a difficult thing to define for some people but i think in the ethereum classic community we're um pretty you know we, we have our bearings and what we know it means even though some people not in the community try to twist twist what we what we say and what we want to do and what our objectives are into weird and strange ways, you know? Yeah, yeah. What makes it confusing is that the Ethereum hard fork that recovered the DAO funds uh, uh, didn't didn't technically change the blockchain. Uh, what it did was it affected how the state is made from the blockchain, and so. Um, and so that people think, okay, immutability just means that you don't change the blockchain, uh, but it, people mean uh, more than that. So uh, I, w I was thinking about this, and I agree there. It, it, it we it, it might be a little tricky to pin down exactly technically what people mean by immutability, um, but uh, yeah. I, I think it at least means don't change the stupid blockchain. Leave that alone. That we can agree that at least, I think everybody would agree that it at least means that. Yeah, I think um, you know what what I try to when people talk to me about it, what I try to you know explain is that I whatever transaction took place on the blockchain won't be altered. If yes. there's a transaction that took place on the blockchain, we're not going to alter it. And um, you know that's and and people try to bring up and this this was a big uh, slogan. For the ETC community, which became problematic, uh, unfortunately, the code is law, and so you can just never change anything ever again. But that would be kind of uh, a silly thing to to even try to stick to, because that would mean that you created this piece of software perfectly the very first time, which is obviously uh, nearly 
uh, actually we don't have to say nearly it's impossible to do yeah yeah and so and also uh, about the changing the you don't want to change transactions but um, the 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 hard previous hard the recent hard forks that both systems did raised of course the gas prices to uh, to to protect against denial of service attacks but what's interesting is that is um, it, somebody might have an idea of the way these systems work and then a month later after the hard fork and say wait it's not working that way um, somebody could be a stickler and say well no no that was a violation of immutability too so that that just shows that it, it's kind of it's tricky to pin down exactly well, I would say I would say one of the important concepts is for you know like one analogy that I was saying is let's say you were to add not let's say this actually happened when they added the three-point line in the NBA mm -hmm. you don't um, after the three-point line is added go and change a bunch of scores that already took place the year before or 20 years before mm -hmm. you know so changing the rules as long as those new rules apply going forward uh, is a little bit different than something that already took place and then you're trying to change the score um, after the fact yes. is, is a little yes. bit different yes so yes. Um, but yeah it's um, it's definitely a, a tricky thing but I, I think we have our principles down pretty solidly and uh, I like where we're going on the way forward yep Me too. Um, so another uh, couple of things we could talk about uh, just talk about the community in general uh, for anybody listening that doesn't know out there, we've got uh, a Twitter account that we'll post in the description below. You know, it's got a ton of followers, uh, really active Reddit, really active Slack, uh, Telegram group with, you know, over 780 users on there. Uh, 781 is the count now by, by my estimation. Uh, we've got a WeChat, although it's mostly a lot of the uh, Asian interests and Asian community participating on there. Um, Miners, you can check gastracker.io. You can see what the big mining pools are and what's going on with the uh, hash rate. And uh, I think one of the last things I want to talk about that's uh, uh, kind of a start, start a lot of buzz in the community, Christian. Uh, now, just to be clear, everyone listening, this is um, not an official announcement in any way, but it's in reference to uh, the major Chinese exchange, BTCC, um, possibly starting trading of Ethereum Classic. Uh, according to uh, Coin Telegraph, which, uh, if anyone does read them, they're the uh, uh, cryptocurrency or blockchain news uh, website that has the uh, cartoons. They do a lot of the the mm -hmm. drawings. You know, it's, it kind of distinguishes them from a lot of other different news sites. So it's it's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, that would be great. Really you know, then encourage other uh, entities to support ETC, and uh, who knows where that'll. And, uh, yeah, yeah, but um, so it's an interesting article, and I checked it out. But I, I got, I think um, it's just based off a couple of tweets back and forth. But I, I do know that Asia and the international community is very interested in Ethereum Classic. So even if this article um, is kind of just a little bit of a rumor mill, I, I definitely think there's some truth to it based on the interest that I see over there. So I was wondering if you um, you got a chance to read some of that article. What do you think? Uh, I just saw the, the, the headline, but I, I didn't read into the details. But, uh, but yeah, if that's, if that's really uh, true, I think that would be great. But I'm kind of just taking a wait-and-see attitude right now. Yeah, it's pretty new. It was actually, um, looks like it was just posted on Reddit okay. uh, a few hours ago. Um, so it's, it's, it's relatively new. I think it's been out for more than a few hours, but a lot of buzz going on talking about it. And yeah. um, so what are, uh, what are some things uh, you see going on in the community uh, last week that maybe you want to talk about with the, the viewer or the listeners out there or stuff uh, that you're working on? What, uh, I know you probably have an article that you're thinking about writing. and Yeah, I was, thinking, I was thinking of uh, maybe doing something on monetary policy, uh, something on smart contracts, explaining the basics of those. Um, I know that the... Monetary policy is something, as you said, everybody's thinking about. And but uh, I have to figure figure out how to write that. You know, not trying to make pronouncements as if I'm an economist. Uh, so but that's one thing I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I know there was um, someone also posted something about uh, Haskell and smart contracts. Um, again, this is this is some stuff I'm not really 
uh, into oh, as much as yes, you. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about that. So we the the uh, DAO attack got everybody interested in. Gosh, how can we make smart contracts secure? And Charles actually mentioned uh, some languages he's looking into in that interview that that you mentioned. And um, so there's there's an article on why people should check out Haskell. Haskell is this uh, academic functional language that's become very practical, even though it had uh, academic beginnings. And uh, a lot of people think that that would be a great uh, language to, to make uh, ETC smart contracts because you can, yeah. you can make certain guarantees, um, right, right. especially if there's lots of money involved. So that's yeah, something. Yeah, he, he yeah, talks that's about mission critical software and you know the differences between uh, security and accessibility and for something like ETC or for something like a blockchain or cryptocurrency um, you would want security um, trumping accessibility and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes and I personally always thought functional programming was something that um, it was interesting but I didn't know how practical it was uh, it was something I'd like to, 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 to get into and uh, I thought about getting a job in Haskell at one point, but uh, this is nice now that uh, well, it's not nice that the DAO attack happened. But uh, if any good can come out of that bad event, that if people are now thinking of functional programming and Haskell more, then uh, that could hopefully lead to a lot of good things. Yeah, like a, a silver lining type thing you're talking yes. about, I guess. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you got you got to you know when something bad happens, you got to try to try to find the good in it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's that's definitely the one if, you know, it may be something like the DAO that shifts everybody towards these, um, you know, uh, safer, I don't want to say safer, but more secure programming languages and, you know, it just helps the space, the blockchain space in general. Um, yeah, and so I'm not saying, yeah, and I'm not, it's not like this is a new field. There's been decades right. of research. It's just that not uh, everybody uh, cares about it or knows about it. Like I would... I, I don't, I've never written an air traffic controlling system, but I assume that they know all about, uh, right, secure software, uh, software that runs nuclear power plants. But uh, it's, just, right, right. it's just nice to, to see it, this, this, this stuff get applied to more and more sectors of the economy. And, uh, and so that, that's what's exciting to me is, is having more developers talking about it, excited about it, and uh, using it. Cool, cool. Um, um, so I uh, gave everybody a quick rundown of the dev report and kind of what's going on inside the community and what's going on in the inside Slack, inside Telegram. Uh, so uh, thanks, uh, thanks Christian for for joining. Um, you know, you guys are going to be doing this every week for everybody out there listening. Uh, so if there's any uh, thing you guys want to know about or anything you're interested in us talking about, uh, leave it in the comments below and we'll definitely uh, get to it. Yes, we love yes. feedback. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Christian, take care. All right. Have a good one.